Welcome to our online service. I'm glad uh, that you can join us. Uh, not that long ago, it was my birthday and people were kind enough uh, to give me presents, which I very much enjoyed, some of which I'm still enjoying. Uh, in fact, even some of which I'm, I'm intending to spend in the near future. Uh, they didn't give me presents because I deserved them. Uh, and if you ask them, Heaven knows they'll tell you that I didn't deserve them. Uh, they gave me presents because they cared about me. Uh, and that's, that, that's lovely. Um, God gives us his grace. He loves us. He gives us his grace. Uh, not because we deserve it. It's not our right. Uh, we don't really deserve anything from him. But he does love us. Um, and graciously he speaks to us. And can change our lives uh, and and change us for the better uh, that's a wonderful thing i trust that we will learn something about that in this online service uh, let me pray for us as we begin that father we thank you for your love uh, that it reaches us uh, and that we don't have to deserve it uh, but we do want to please you and uh, we pray that in the course of this service that you will speak to us that you will show us something of yourself and that we will be all the better for having heard it. Uh, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. to the children's talk and I'm going to start with a question and I'm going to ask you if you have a favourite packet of sweets. Have you got a favourite packet? I have, yes. Toffees. Toffees, all right. Well, I'll show you what my favourite one. Have you got, say, a favourite one? Well, I'll show you mine. These are my favourites. The indoor chocolates. I like every single one of them. I like the dark red ones, the dark ones. 
I think these are milk chocolate. And there's some gold ones here. Oh, I just love them all. But if I have a friend round, I always ask them if they would like one. Would you like one? No. Oh, you don't want one? No, I want all of them. But I'm going to have all of them. Thanks very much. Oh, dear. <laughs> My favourites indeed. Oh, lovely. Oh, OK. Bye. Well, isn't that rude? Isn't that cheeky? I think that's shocking. Now, that was really shocking that Roger took all my chocolates and didn't leave any, any at all for me. He, he could have left me one or, or two or three because I do so enjoy having them whenever I like. But having said that, what about imagining this, that the chocolates are actually, actually represent my life or perhaps your life? And... All the chocolates inside represent the things we like to do. So you might like playing football, you might like reading, you might like watching television, you might like meeting, going out with your friends. All those things like going on holiday, going for walks, having a lovely time, enjoying sport at school. And supposing the person who is wanting all of those things, not chocolates now, but all the parts of your life, isn't a friend, but it's the Lord God. Supposing it's the Lord God saying, I want all of your life. Well, is that cheeky? Is that rude? Is that greedy of God? Well, I would say no, it's not. And there are three reasons that are very important that I, I can think of, but I'm sure you can think of lots of others. The first one is that God is our creator. And right at the beginning of the Bible, it tells us that God said, let us make man in our own image. So God made us like himself to represent, to be a reflection of him. And he made us as the psalm says, beautifully and wonderfully. Have you ever thought about how marvellous it is, all the things you can do, that your brain can think, you can talk, you can run, you can sleep, you can laugh, you can have jokes. It's amazing how we're made. So God is our creator. And because he's made us, we belong to him. He owns us. And he... Because he owns us, therefore he wants to be a part of all our life. Now the second reason that God wants to be part of our life is because he loves us very, very much. In the Old Testament, in a book by a prophet called Jeremiah, he says, God tells us, yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Now, everlasting love means that God loves us, not with a love that goes on a little while and then stops, but with a love that goes on and on and never stops forever. Not wherever we are, whoever we are, whatever we've done, whatever we've, wherever we've gone, always God loves us. And because he loves us, he knows what is best for us. And he wants to share what is best for us with us. And the third reason for God wanting all of our life is that God has promised, again in the Bible, where we can read about him and what he's done for us, he has promised to be with us, to help us and to guide us. God has said, don't be afraid because I am with you. He said, I will help you, just like a father holds the hand of his child when they're in a busy or dangerous or frightening place. God says, I will help you. I will hold your hand, as it were. So God isn't being cheeky, greedy or rude when he asks us to give, us all, give, us, give him all of our lives. He wants to be with us and to help us and to make our lives really the best they can be. So how do we start to give God all of our life? What, what would we need to do? 
Well, here's just an example that I thought of that, that might help us, although it is something that we learn every day that we try to please God as we go through our lives and as we read more about his word. But in one book in the New Testament, in the little book of Ephesians, chapter four, there's one verse that begins, be kind to one another. So when we are trying to be kind to other people, that's one way of letting God into all of our life, not just the life we have on a Sunday or when we feel like it. Now, I wonder if you can think of a way that you can be kind to someone today. I'll just give you some, just a couple of seconds to think about that. Did you think of something? Well, if you have, well done. If you've still got to think of them, here are some more. We could say thank you. That's such a lovely and kind thing to do. We could make a card to give to someone. We could hold the door open for another person. We could tidy our bedroom. We could let a younger person win the game if they're not quite so good at it. We could let them have some chances. Or we could make a phone call for a, to a friend. Or we could say well done to a person who's done something really, really well. Well, the list goes on. And I've got a challenge for you. I wonder how many people and how many times you can find today to say a real thank you to someone for something they've done. And now it just leaves me to say thank you for listening. First John chapter 4 verse 14 to 21 Jesus and the Samaritan woman but whoever drinks the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring which will provide him with life-giving water and give him eternal life. Sir, the woman said, Give me that water, then I will never be thirsty again. Nor will I have to come here to draw water. Go and call your husband, Jesus told her, and come back. I haven't got a husband, she answered. Jesus replied, you're right when you say you haven't got a husband. You have married to five men, and the man you live with now is not really your husband. You have told me the truth. I see that you are a prophet, sir, the woman said. My Samaritan ancestors worshipped God on this mountain. But you Jews say that Jerusalem is the place where we should worship God. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the time will come when people will not worship the Father even on this mountain or in Jerusalem.
everlasting. There is gladness, there is peace, there is wine ever flowing. There's a wedding, there's a feast because of you. Because of to our 215th Sunday online service for the 7th of July 2024. Grace is the topic. A fortnight ago we dealt with something for nothing. In a fortnight's time, if the Lord will, and Tarry will be dealing with enabling the impossible. But this week, the unattainable attained. Uh, Let's start with a definition of grace. It means the blessing, the help, the favour of God himself in all his goodness and love, giving us, us obtaining from him what we don't deserve and could not achieve. And it's particularly on that could not achieve, cannot attain, side of it that we're thinking this time but all these subjects overlap very much in other words the blessing of god that's completely naturally speaking out of reach it's not tantalizingly out of reach you know if i could just stretch a bit more if i could stretch billions of times more i would still be an infinitely long way from the blessing of god i need grace that which I can't obtain, brought to me, free of charge, just given as a gift. I'm going to deal firstly uh, with regard to uh, our understanding of God. An understanding of God brought to us that we wouldn't have otherwise. Our nearness to God brought to us and our rel and a relationship to God simply granted to us freely, our understanding of God. Um, we can understand a certain amount just naturally, um, only because he made me. And in that, that's, that's his grace, because I don't deserve to exist in a sense. But thinking of it naturally, I can discern that God has created the world. That's a matter of logic. I can discern that he must be powerful, intelligent, that he must be outside of the creation he has made. Otherwise, he would be part of it and then subject to the laws of decay and so on and therefore need a creator himself and so on. That that there is one God because of the unity of the laws of physics and so on all around the world, that, that he has tremendous design, the ability to design. So we've said about his intelligence, various things I can tell. But all of those things are spoiled by sin. So I don't have a close relationship. That's the third point to my creator. But there's nothing in creation that tells me about the love of God. Somebody may say, oh, look at that beautiful flower given by a loving God. Yes, but look at the disease that destroys it and the horrible cancers that we have. Well, that's another subject. But I cannot, you know, in, in other words, why God allows those things. But... Uh, I, I cannot know the love or even the justice. Have we got a just world? No. The justice of God and certainly not the wisdom. Is this the best way to do things? It is, but I can't tell that just by looking at creation. If I'm to know God in these ways and to know him not just simply as God, but as we'll see later on as my father, if I'm to understand the goodness and the grace and the love and the justice and the wisdom of God, 
I need something outside of me. God has got to bring that understanding to me. I'm going to read you a verse um, where Paul, the apostle, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, quotes the very first chapter of the Bible and relates the um, story of creation. Then God speaking, especially when he began to speak, light and made light, created light. Paul applies that spiritually to us and he puts it like this for God who commanded the light to shine that God has shined in our hearts obviously not natural light not photons what sort of light to give us the light of the knowledge and understanding of the glory of God all that he is shown in the face of Jesus Christ the person of Christ is God who became a man and I can see him. Know that as God commands the light to shine through the grace of the Holy Spirit. And I could not know that apart from him coming. He, he is the light of the world. He, he, he is God and, and I can see the morality, wisdom, person, purpose of God in him. And especially... He claimed to be the light of the world, which is not only a revelation of himself, but shows us it, it, our need and our sin. Well, we may already, we should already be aware of our sin. Just naturally, conscience should play us up. But it, it becomes more apparent when I see that it's because of my sin that Christ died. God Almighty who is without sin, became sin for me. And I'd never understand that, apart from God commanding that understanding to light up my heart and I see it. And I see my sin on him and I'm delivered and I'm free. Uh, not only is he the sin bearer, he's now in heaven praying for us. He, he, he keeps me from sin. And, and that is not obtainable naturally. I can study nature for as long as I wish. I can look out into the heavens, be impressed with the majesty and power of God, but I would never have this understanding of his nature and love and goodness and, and the way he wants to deal, the, the, the plan he has for me. That's grace. And God still commands the light to shine in our hearts in your heart maybe he's be this the process is beginning <laughs> maybe it's happened to you already thirdly it's grace or secondly i should say let's do thirdly when we come to the third point in a in in our nearness to god um let me let me read you it was it was read to us uh <clears throat> 1 john chapter 4 and verse 14 where John says this, and we have seen and do testify, we're telling you that the father sent the son to be the saviour of the world. Jesus, who is God, was sent and he came willingly to this earth so that to, to bring God to us, of course, he is God, as the Father is God, as the Holy Spirit is God. As it puts it in the, the carol, the Christmas carol, once in Royal David City, he came down from uh, uh, to earth from heaven, who is God and Lord of all. Um, uh, 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 there's an interesting, I'm going to read you the verse, John chapter 3, verse 13, uh, a very wonderful scripture. Um, words of the Lord Jesus himself he's talking about himself he said no man has ascended up to heaven that's beyond us but he that came down from heaven there's a man who came from heaven what well, he was God and he became a man even the son of man the way Jesus loved to refer to himself which is in heaven so he came from heaven there's the location but as far as his relationship with God was concerned, there was no sin. He completely obeyed him. He was still in heaven in his in his experience of heaven. In other words, heaven 
came somewhere that was the word heaven is kind of that which is heaved up the sky that which is out of touch remember at the time that they were writing there were no sky there were no rockets or airplanes or anything completely uh, beyond our reach coming down heaven comes down that's the point in christ and in john chapter 1 and verse 12 as many as received him it is possible to receive heaven the light and life and blessing of God and his grace. Something we couldn't achieve, certainly don't deserve. It's beyond our ability. Another way to, to, to look at it like this is that a, the Christian has had a spiritual resurrection. And, and according to Paul, he's been raised from the dead and is seated in the heavenly places, in the heavenlies, in Christ, with Christ, so that it's not just heaven coming down, but we have been taken up to heaven, something that we couldn't do. I cannot resurrect myself. I will. Neither can you. We can't do it. But we, but spiritually, for the Christian, the one who's received Jesus as Lord and Saviour, this has happened. And then this body, which is at the moment decaying, let me assure you, uh, it is. Uh, if you had any doubts, it certainly is. That on, when Christ returns to this earth, it too will be resurrected. In other words, bringing us up to heaven and to, to the condition of heaven and the place of heaven and this nearness to God and, and having the experience of the life of God in my soul and body. That is grace. It's something beyond our ability, the, the, but the unattainable can be completely attained, obtained in Christ. And finally, our relationship to God. Uh, um, we, 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 those who receive, we've already spoken of this, those who receive Jesus as, as God who became man died for our sins, and, and risen and, and he's Lord of the universe, completely in control. Lord, I receive you personally by your grace. Come in, live in me, change me, make me yours, wash away my sins. Be Lord in my life in that direct sense. The person who's done that has a change of relationship. God becomes their father. We've already said God is in three persons. There is one God, but there are three persons in that one Godhead. And when I receive Christ, I'm born into the family of God and, and God is my father. When I receive Christ in that way, I, I become part of, of, of humanity that have been brought into the church of Christ and they are the bride of Christ. And so I'm part, every Christian is part of that, has that intimate relationship with Christ, a bride. And what else would a father want for his son than a bride? But the bride would have to be good enough for his son. And we're not, that's unobtainable, but Christ makes us good enough through his cross and resurrection and his prayers for us now and so on. And he will present us faultless before the presence of his glory, a bride that has no blemish at all. That, that, that's unobtainable naturally, it's grace. And of course, the facilitator, if I can put it that way, the Holy Spirit doesn't take a proper name, if I can put it that way to himself. He just simply looks for people, draws people to Christ, brings Christ to people. Um, he speaks of Christ who then speaks to the Father. And, and that one comes and lives in us and brings the presence of the Father and the Son. And, and so, so we have this relationship with the Holy Spirit as the one who, without speaking of himself, just enables everything, all the purpose of God. Isn't God wonderful? <laughs> Let me just give you a clue. Yes, he is. And it's grace. We don't deserve it. Let me just give you an illustration from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55. I so often refer to this. Some of you who have heard me before may well have heard me say this before. Uh, verses eight and nine bring us the problem. Verses 
uh, 10 and 11, the answer, but it, 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 it's in the figure, it's figurative, beautiful, pictorial, poetic language of, 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 of heaven, God, way beyond us, and down here where we are, and the answer, heaven coming down. And there it is, uh, verses eight and nine, here's the problem. God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. We don't think in the same way, which is why we're commanded to repent, to change our minds. We can't do that without his grace either. But my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways. We think differently. We act differently. We have different desires. We, we're, just, we're just cut off from each other. And, and, and I am holy, pure and righteous and loving. You're selfish, egotistical, sinful, spoiled, ruined, without any hope. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For, here's the illustration, as the heavens are higher than the earth, the sky, that which is heaved up, the universe, the stars, way beyond our reach, uh, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. And that is a big problem. And naturally speaking, I cannot attain that, that, that gap, that distance is beyond any hope. But God acts in grace. And it's the figure of precipitation. Verse 10, for as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, obviously that just that part of heaven, just above us, of course. But it's still, as far as we're concerned, as far as the figure is concerned, completely out of reach. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and, and doesn't go back there, what it does with the rain cycle, but not in the sense of it just vanishes before it's done what it should do. It returns not thither, but waters the earth and makes it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. In other words, give you all your need, allow life to continue. You wouldn't have any life if, if the source of life didn't come down to you. In this case, rain. So, here's the picture. So shall my word that goes forth out of my mouth. It's not just to point out your sin and how rotten you are. That's part of it, but only in order to receive the message of Christ and his grace and love and forgiveness and so on. So shall, it's coming down, so shall my word that goes forth out of my mouth, I'm speaking to you, I'm communicating from the place where you could not come, but I'm telling you, just as Jesus came down, the message, he is the message, of course. And it shall not return to me void. It, it can't be cancelled but it shall accomplish that which I please, all my justice, all my love, because love and justice can both be fulfilled in Christ. The justice, my sin must be punished, Christ has taken it, but the love he wants to forgive and receive me into himself. Yes, I can receive that, and his wisdom. Who would have thought of God becoming down and doing this? It's impossible naturally to see that. But it shall accomplish that which I please. All my love, justice and wisdom, and it shall prosper. It will succeed in the thing where, whereunto I send it. Just as he sent Christ and he has and is succeeding to save people. My message, which brings the life and wonder of Christ, is doing the same thing. And then if you want to read verses 12 and 13 do is a lovely, beautiful description of, of what the purpose of God is. It, but in New Testament terms, in the words of the hymn, heaven came down and glory filled my soul when at the cross my saviour made me whole, saved me. The, the fragmentation, the ruin of my sin brought about by sin was reversed. My sins were washed away. My night was turned to day, commanded the light to shine. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. And heaven is Christ. 
even the son of man who is in heaven and when he comes he's still in heaven he comes down to earth but his experience of heaven in himself because he's God in his heaven and in his relationship to God is perfect and that relationship is imparted to me free of charge I cannot achieve it it is unattainable but the unattainable in Christ is attained and he comes to you now receive him please please receive him amen
thank you for joining us. The Bible says that God is the God of all grace. And that's the basis upon which we approach him. Let's pray together. Our gracious God, we are so grateful for your love, goodness and grace. Help us to have grace, to receive your grace. All in our Lord Jesus Christ. To this end, we seek your blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.